In this video, we're going to look at a very simple example of how we can assemble a 4-bit binary down counter in LT Spice. We actually have an equivalent video where we assemble the same circuit on a breadboard, but we're going to do the same thing in this simulation software as well. So just as a little bit of preamble, I have here a table of the 4-bit aggregates that our circuit is hopefully going to count, and it's going to count down. We have um, four bits in each combination, which gives us a total of 16 combinations, which I've numbered not 1 to 16, but rather 0 to 15. And the idea is our circuit is going to count down through these different binary combinations, all the way down from 15 down to 0. And we'll hopefully see that in this circuit. And what we're going to do is we're going to create this uh, counter entirely out of D-type flip-flops. And we're going to need four of them for those four uh, different bits of our um, count. So as in previous videos, we have some different toolbars along the top. Um, I'm not going to depend on these or use these that much, but rather going to use these um, keyboard combinations, uh, these keyboard functions rather, which are consistent um, across different versions of this software. For instance, if you're on a Mac, you may not have the same menu bar, but these functions um, will still be useful. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to insert some of our D-type flip-flops. So to do that, I'm pressing F2. You might have to hold down the uh, function key on um, a Mac or on a, a smaller laptop, um, the Fn function key, and then press F2. But either way, F2 gives us this menu here to insert some different components. And we want a digital component, and it's just a D-type flip-flop. D-flop is our component there. And I want to insert four of these. So what I want to do is one, two, uh, three. I want to need to zoom out a little bit. And four. Another useful... Um, button to know is the space bar which automatically sort of zooms to fit so you'll be um, increasingly sort of relying on the space bar button just to get back to to a sensible zoom then anyway what I want to do is I want to first of all add our clock input to this circuit and that's going to drive the rate of the count and to do that I'm going to just insert a voltage I'm pressing V on a Windows keyboard to insert a voltage, or alternatively, just by pressing F2 again um, and going back up to the main menu there, we can choose um, a voltage from the menu. That's the same thing. But either way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this circuit up in a sort of cascading manner. And I'll just move that. I've pressed F7 there just to move that out of the way a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this connected so that... Um, our clock input here is connected to the clock input of our first D-type flip-flop. Now, in the other video, I mentioned a little bit about the operation of the D-type flip-flop, but we can sort of summarize the operation very simply in that Q follows D after the next clock pulse. So what I mean by that is we have a clock pulse here, which is going to be, we're going to set this to pulse every one second, actually. So every second we get a pulse to the clock input. And it's telling the D-type flip-flop to copy our input D, which is for data, our data input. It's going to copy it, and whatever D is, Q will copy it every time the clock pulse receives that, that input pulse there. So Q follows D after the next clock pulse. That's the set kind of one-sentence summary there. So if D is zero... After the next clock pulse, Q will be zero. If D is one or high, after the next clock pulse, Q will be high. The only other output here is not Q. Well, not Q is just the opposite of Q. So whatever Q is, not Q will be the opposite of Q is one, not Q will be zero, and vice versa. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to set this up very simply in a sort of cascading manner, and the Q of each stage is going to lead to the clock of the next stage. I'm not going to go too much into the sort of theory behind this. We're just going to very quickly set it up. 
and so we end up with something like this. I've pressed F3 to insert a wire there, and I'm just connecting Q to clock for each stage. The only other thing I need to do is I need to connect the not Q from each stage back round to the data input, the D input of each stage as well. So not Q, I'm going to take round to D. One thing to watch out for is that these wires aren't connected when they cross. So you'll see there that the, the wires just sort of pass over one another. Um, I'll, I'll do one wrong just for example's sake. And what we'll see is if those wires are connected, uh, for instance, if I do something like that, you have that sort of blocky um, connection there to show that the connection's been made. We don't want to see that for these. We want to sort of pass straight over that wire and connect to the D rather than creating a connection there to the clock. So what I'm going to do is press F5 to delete that wire. And instead, uh, F3 again, I'm going to connect that wire so it goes straight over and connects to D. So we don't have that connection there. Uh, two more, not Q, um, connects to D, and then not Q, connects to D. Okay, that's pretty much our circuit set up. We're using sort of the default model for the D-type flip-flop. Um, in reality, when we made the circuit on breadboard, the D-type flip-flop needs a power supply and all this kind of thing. Um, in the simulation, it, it kind of just assumes these for granted. Um, but what we are going to do is set up our clock pulse. Um, and what we're going to do there is I want to right-click on that voltage because it hasn't been defined yet. There's no actual voltage value or anything. Um, and by default, this is a DC voltage. We don't want a DC constant voltage we want to pulse and so i'm going to go to advanced here and from the options we have a pulse and what i want is kind of like a square wave i want something that's um it, on every second and switches off again so we get this one one second sort of square wave so to do that i need to set a few different values i need to set um, my initial value as zero and i need to set my on value as five. So basically we're going from zero volts to five volts, down to zero volts, down to five volts. The delay here I can leave, um, but what I do need to set is the rise and the fall time. Now, in reality, there's no such thing as a square wave. For something to go instantly from zero volts up to five volts in zero time, is not actually really sort of possible and, and certainly something that um, LT Spice doesn't process. So what we need to do is we need to try and sort of approximate a square wave. And to do that, we look at these rise and fall times. So the rise time is the amount of time that it takes for the um, pulse to rise from zero to five. Now, if it was a perfect square wave, that rise time would be zero. And likewise, the fall time, would be the time it takes to go from five down to zero again. And again, that's ideally zero. In LT Spice, we can't have zero as a rise and a fall time. There needs to be some amount of time there to make that sort of physically possible. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a very sort of negligible time of one P, which stands for one picosecond. So essentially, no time at all. But we need to have some kind of non-zero time in there to make this work correctly. Lastly, we have the on and the period. And what I, what we mean by that is the, the period is the amount of um, time it takes for one cycle of our pulse. Well, what I want is a one hertz count, one second, uh, or one pulse per second. And so the, the period is gonna be one. It's gonna take one second because uh, the period's measured in seconds, it's going to take one second to go through one cycle of our pulse. But for it to be a pulse, it needs to be on for some of the time and off for some of the time. So what we can define here is the T on is the amount of time that the pulse is actually on compared to when it's off. So notice here we have our V initial and our V on, 
5 volts is our on voltage. Well, for it to be a square wave, we can't have it on all the time, then it just becomes a constant. We need to have it on only some of the time. So of the, the period time, the period time is 1 for the full cycle, maybe we want it on for half of that, so 0 0.5 seconds. So 0 0.5 seconds it's on, well the remainder, which is another 0 0.5 seconds to make up the total period, is going to be when the, the, the um, input's off. So we have a sort of 50% duty cycle, it's on for half the time, half a second, it's off for half a second. Let's click OK there, and we have our sort of pulse defined in sort of um, spice language down here, but if you ever want to edit that, we can just right click again, and we can bring up those options again. Um, what we can now do is we can start to visualize each of these four stages. And to do that, I need to set a spice command. Because, let's just bring these combinations back, we've set a count of one hertz, one second. It's gonna take one second to go through each of these combinations. And we have 16 combinations. So what we need is to tell LT Spice that we want to observe 16 seconds worth of time. And to do that, we're going to insert a spice command. We're gonna type um, we can just type the letter T for text, and when we type T, we get an option actually, we can type a comment, which is just text here, what I've typed for these um, functions and my little title here, these were just comments, but we don't want to do that, we want to set a spice directive, so I press T and I'm going to choose a spice directive. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to um, ask LT Spice to perform a transient analysis and the sort of um, command for that is starting with a full stop or a period, full stop, T-I-N, tran, space, 16. And so what I'm telling LT Spice there is I want to observe a transient, in other words, a period of time for 16 seconds. Now, a little hint, if you're not familiar with Spice commands and Spice language, is what you can do here is you can right-click it's, it's quite sort of sneakily hidden away, but we can right click and choose help me edit. And then we get some actual helpful options here, which are sort of hidden away really. Um, but we're performing an analysis command. Here's our transient, and we want to measure a transient over the course of 16 seconds. It's measured in seconds by default. And you'll notice it's written that out for us there, that command that we talked about, uh, full stop tran 16. Um, so you can do it via the menu. We don't need any of these other options um, for the purposes of what we're doing. So either way, I press OK, and I've got this bit of text. It doesn't matter where I put it, I'll put it anywhere. I'll just hide it down in the bottom right-hand corner there. So now that we've got the, the um, command, there's only one thing I've just forgotten, and it'll throw up an error if I don't. I need to have a ground here at the bottom of my um, um, voltage source there, just so it knows that we're defining that voltage relative to ground. If I'd forgotten to do that, it would just ask me to do it when I start the simulation. Anyway, we can start or run the simulation now. We just choose this Run button. And when I do that, what I get is a blank sort of um, plot up here with nothing in it. But you'll notice the x-axis now stretches from 0 to 16, which is a good sign. Um, what I'll do just at the bottom here, I'll just move a couple of things. Um, I'll just compress these a little bit and then I'll press um, escape just to get rid of that um, move hand and I'll press space bar to zoom in again so we can see a bit clearer what we're doing. So what I want to do is I would like to observe the um, Q outputs of each stage. So when I'm running the simulation, when I click back to this um, schematic window, you'll notice now that my cursor has these sort of voltage probe tips when I hover over things that I can measure. So I'm just hovering over the connections to each Q stage there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure, I might need a little bit of wire just sticking out of here so that I can measure there as well. Another good tip is if you make an amendment to a circuit while the simulation's running, it's a good idea to run it again 
Um, reason being because technically when I've added a wire in, I might have added a new node that wasn't taken into account when I ran the simulation pe previously. So because I've changed the circuit, I've ran the simulation again just to make sure that it's now taking into account the amended version um, when I take some measurements. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take measurements from each of the uh, Q outputs of each stage. So one, two, three, and four. Now, by default, we've plotted all of these traces on the same plot pane, which is a little bit awkward to try and make out here. So what I'm going to do is just at the top here in this window, uh, where we can see our plot, I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to add a plot pane. And I'm going to do that a couple of more times because I want four um, plot panes for each of our um, measurements here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag these into the respective panes. So what we have now, I'll just, um, I'll maybe move this just out the way a little bit to make this a bit bigger, is we have our first stage, second stage, third stage, and fourth stage. And what we'll hopefully notice is that the the rate of each or the, the, the duration of each is doubled for each successive stage. And so what we have here is uh, in the first stage, it's on for a second, it's off for a second, on for a second here. It's on for two seconds, off for two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds, and so forth. But the result of all of these is we are sort of mirroring these combinations now and what we find is over the course of 16 seconds we actually move through all of these combinations starting at 1111 and then 1110 notice these are sort of in reverse order so 1110 for the second um, second there and 1101 for the third second so we're about here one one zero one and so on and so forth we're sort of um, working through these four bit combinations all the way from 15 down eventually if i move this out the way to zero 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 in the last in the last seconds worth there so hopefully this video has been useful in, in showing how we can do that with D-type flip-flops. The only other thing that I want to just mention very quickly is you'll notice by default the model of the D-type flip-flop in uh, LT Spice has an output voltage of 1 volt when it's high and 0 volts when it's low. Now that might not be the case um, in, in a practical circuit. It certainly wasn't the case when we built this on breadboard. That's an easy enough modification to make just by going into the settings of each of these D-type flip-flops. So what I can do is I can right click on the D-type flip-flop and where it asks for a spice line, I can add another little spice command in here and the command is V high. So I've used a capital V high, V high equals whatever we want it to be. So let's say it's five volts. So V high equals five. And I'll do that for each of them. V high equals 5. So when I've done that, I'll run the simulation again. You'll notice now it's rescaled our graph now to work between 0 and 5 volts. So I hope this video has been useful in showing how we can still observe um, sequential combinations in logic circuits using LT Spice by performing a transient analysis.